sofa6.co.uk. Sponsors of The Haze Hour. Yes, they are. And it is The Haze Hour. It's, uh, it's Monday night. I yes. was going to say it's Thursday night, but it's not Thursday night. It's definitely Monday definitely night, because yesterday Monday. was Sunday, wasn't it? It was, yes. All day? Yes. It was. And you find me here in, 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 in Here's Our Tower. Here's Our Tower. Here's Our Tower. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been on the Coke, Coca-Cola. Only it's Pepsi Max, apparently. My wife's bought new stuff. It doesn't Is send it? us hyper or anything like that. Um, interesting week. And interesting stuff to look at, and there's already been some bits and bobs of chat in chat. They must have known what I was going to look at tonight, or some of the stuff, because there's been talk of exploding batteries and all kinds. We'll be talking about that. We're going to be looking at some new juice. Well, it's new to me. It's called Druid's Fluid. Druid's Fluid. Druid's Fluid. Absolutely right. That's what it's called. Um, some adapters for... Uh, um, yes, the Zorbus has come through that allows you to use them on a JJ. I'll have a quick look at that. It's only a very, very short little segment. Uh, we're going to be talking about MPs and going to meet them on Friday. Um, we're going to be talking about the shop I went to on Saturday and what I saw. Oh, the one I was on about? Aye. It's oh, you went? I went and we're going back to film. The civil oh, right. Code. But I went and had a look and I was, I was, I was gobsmacked. It was fabulous. The number, never mind, I'll tell you later, just reminders on, number of ladies and how big I looked, or something looked, anyway, there was that. Uh, what? She's over. Nothing. I never said a word. No, oh, it was the shop. Were there any customers in the shop? Mm. Oh, loads, aye. It was brilliant. Huh? It, it was, it was cracking, oh, it was gorgeous right. and lovely and marvellous and wonderful and various other stuff like that. We'll be talking about battery safety and a new battery that's just come to me that might make battery safety more safer than it otherwise this barrel loads we've got so much stuff to look at you wouldn't believe so all of this guff you might have heard in the pre-show about having no material i was telling porky pies <laughs> as you do um tonight as per usual as is the norm on a monday night i am joined by my oldest bestest friend keith hello keith hello good hello. evening fine yeah. thank you good, yes good. that's what we like to hear nice to be here again are you all perky and stuff like that i suppose so yes not yes. pinky. No, still waxing lyrical over the football, but that's. Ah, uh, yes, of course, because apparently Sunderland beat Newcastle on Saturday, was it? Yes. That would explain why everybody in Sunderland was happy as Larry then. Oh, and it would. over in the cat house, <laughs> as one of the ladies in my life that keeps me right and makes sure that I don't transgress or fall off the straight and narrow, it is the one and only hair to day. I'm different on <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's cut. How are you doing, Chris? I'm all right, too. It's not just new hair, though. You've got a new mod and all, haven't you? I've got a new mod. We'll be talking about that. We will be talking about that after the tittles, because I'm not going to forget to put the tittles in tonight. That'll be good. Ah, uh, chap thought you were going to forget. No, 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 no. But, uh, just, just as my eye line moved, I happened to spy tittles <laughs> on me set up. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Yes, it'll be... What are they talking about there now? Oh, Dr. Farsalanos and studies. Studies, yes. I've yes. just been telling them I'm starting to log them on our forums so that they're easier to find. Yes, it'll all be there. They're there. Whip it upset about football. He can't bloody stand it. They're all overpaid ah. prima donnas. What? It was a good game that time with your derby. Was it? But so it says on there. Um, meh. Tell you Never what. Never believe anything you read, eh? No, absolutely not. Uh, shall we start the... <laughs> shall, I'm, no, I'm not going to have... <coughs> I'm not going to have football <coughs> on this show. Because <coughs> I just don't understand it. I don't get it. At all. Unless they're advertising e cigs. I'm interested then, but otherwise I couldn't give a monkey's. Um, shall we sad, do Sad, very sad. What is? What you've just said. Not really. I like cricket. Oh, well, yes. Yes, so do I. But Five uh, days of sitting in the sun, sucking on your squip. Lush. It's the way it should be. Straw hat, white suit, 18 pints a day. Lovely. Can I do that? Falling football, asleep. Man? Aye. Best way. Shall we do the show? We're better. Shall yes. we do the show, Chris? Aye, let's do it. Right. You know the routine. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, it's Monday. Good evening and welcome to 
The Here's Hour. Hour. Where's the titles? There they are. Oh, Yes, Keith really loves that title music, don't you? Oh, it's, it really sends me that. Yes, I'm not entirely Except sure. Except I wouldn't that. call it music, that's no, the difference. No, no, well, it was written by a very good friend of mine. Now, before we get into the show proper with the material that we have prepared, I have been asked to say, how is the copper going? I has it here. I shall put it on close up. Where are we? There we go. That's it. That's me copper, and it has on... Um, my, my only dripping atomizer that I can even half get away with. And it is working absolutely bang on. Um, keep asking for it to go back and put a different battery in, and it's not happening. I like it the way it is, thank you very much. It does the job, and it does it very, very well. And I'm very, very pleased with it. But Chris has another mod based on the DNA 20, haven't you? I do. And I what, do. what's it called? It's called the Vapor Show. The Vapor Shark. Ah. There it is. Now that looks teeny weeny tiny weeny. It is teeny weeny tiny weeny. There's no doubt about that. It's. I would say if you if you're male and you've got large hands, uh, it's not going to be for you. Yes, I've got very big hands. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. That's but my also, problem. it's it's designed with with the, actually with a spheroid in mind. Is it? Yeah, um, and you can see the spheroid fits on there beautifully, absolutely perfectly. You would actually think it was made for it because it's definitely in proportion with that mm -hmm. spheroid. Yeah, and that's what I read, and I mean it's so easy to use. You know, um, you've got your DNA board at the bottom there, it's lit up nicely there. It is. And you've got the controls for it on the side, up and down, mm -hmm. which you can touch accidentally, but it's not really a problem. And then you've got the button, which lights up when you press. Handy. So it, it's nice and simple for folk like me. Um, <laughs> and I really, really like it. Sab ordered one, and without even looking, I said, I'll go on, I'll get one. And I ordered it, and I'm absolutely delighted with it. I know there's a new one out now that the, the, uses with the DNA, the DNA 30. 30. Yeah. Um, chat, I'm trying to do a salve here. Chat's, chat's mentioning all kinds of things. Um, John Divers said, bottom display question mark, great for top leaking atties. Which actually, although you, are you not, you'll not be getting any leaking out of that at the minute, well, are you? The spheroid can be a bitch. Oh. But then what What can't? You know? A lot of things leak. And this is nicely sealed at the top. So this is something I don't need to worry about. Right. Um, it also has the channels. So the airflow is quite good. Uh-huh. I don't know whether you can pick that up. I don't think you can. But you will be able to see if I move it around a bit. There, there is some juice leakage at the top there. All right, yes, I've just got a tiny little wee. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And that does happen. It happens with... Well, can you think of anything it doesn't happen with? Anything that doesn't leak? Yeah. Um, I can only think of one that I have never had a leak out of, ever, at all. What's that? That would be me cracking. Mm. It's never, ever dripped a drop or dropped a drip or anything like that. Uh, they're asking how much it is, Chris. Right, well, I think I've, oh, 
Now, let me see. I think it was something like £132. Hang on, I think I can tell you exactly. Yes, £132.48. Um, there are more due in on the 28th of January, it says. No, uh, no, it says those are already sold out. Um, from a site called e cigarettes online shop. Dot co dot uk that's e dash cigarettes online shop all one word and that's uk so at least you haven't got customs etc to um to pay but obviously you need to keep an eye out for more new stock coming in Aye. some people will prefer the dne 30 which i believe is selling at 110 um which is cheaper again but for me no this is the one to go for. But as I say, I warn you now, if you're going to put... Let's have a look. Right. There's the squib. Yes. They, they want to say the size of the squib against it, which is fair enough. It's not going to work. And if you look at it that way, you can see how much over it's going to be. Oh, that's going to be huge. And the squeeps about the average size of most statties out there. 22 mil, yes. You know, so if you're going to be using it for that kind of thing, whereas if you're going to be... This, let's have a look if I can unscrew this. No, I can't. This thing works too well. Screw in stands. Things like the... Um, well, what you, you've been using there, the Aspire. Yes. Things like that will work beautifully in it. But if they're too wide, forget it. Yes. Forget it. It's going to look stupid. Indeed. So, so, so is, it very, is it very heavy, Chris? Is it? No, it's light as a feather and it charges USB. And it charges really, really nicely. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's... I would say an hour on your computer and you've got, you know, a fairly good charge of this thing. So oh. there you go. That seems canny. It seems canny. I shall I shall await your longer term um, results. Sav's tap, chat, tapping into chat even as we speak. Yeah, she sent me a link and I'm going to have a read of it and then I'll get back to you with what it says. Oh, right, and Silver074 has said you can also vape it while it charges, it's just like the copper. Correct. In, in fact, it is, it's, it's, uh, it's exactly the same in it, isn't it, really? The, uh, the DNA 20. Um, and if it's, if it's anything like the copper, I must, I must actually get one in my hands, either yours or Sav's, and, uh, and have a little fertile and a play with it because it looks teeny tiny weeny. Well, I'm, I'm going to read this out. Um... It's a post that was put over on ECF on the 26th of uh, January. And it says, beware of vapor shark DNA. Um, I was sitting on my couch writing a review on my recently purchased vapor shark DNA. It was a review praising the devices. I'd loved the thing until this happened. I removed my trident. Now, I don't know what a trident is from the vapor shark and began walking to my kitchen with it in my hand. I heard a hissing coming from the device, looked down and smoke was pouring out of the charge port. Oops. Bloody hell. I threw it in my kitchen sink <coughs> and the battery began to expel. At least I assume it was the battery, a yellowish colored liquid flowing from the charge port. The smoke was so thick that the smoke alarm went off. I turned the sink on and ran water on the device. It was causing a burn mark on my stainless steel sink, which there is a photograph of. I was not using the device when this happened. No atomizer was attached, and I had not used it for five to ten minutes prior to the incident. I may just have a defective device stroke battery, but please be aware of this and use caution. I called Vapor Shark, but they're not open on Sundays, left a message and hope to hear back from them as soon as they receive the message. I'll post my results on the conversation when it occurs. 
So there you go. Well, Not if, good. no, it's worth uh, it's worth bringing that up because it is a, a lithium polymer battery that's inside that, which means it's the um, it's it's not a circular battery. It's like a flat pack, and if that once gets punctured, that's, that's it. frightening. That isn't yeah. It? Well, it's no, it's not. It's not frightening because it was dealt with. Well, yes, but, but uh, I mean that's a cause for concern, isn't it? Well, no more. Again, no more than uh, mobile phones, or there have been so many instances of mobile phones going thermal. And, oh, I didn't and, know that. Oh God, yes, yes. Right. It's not. It's not something that is peculiar or particular to e-cigs. The lithium iron and lithium polymer batteries, whether they're a circular, you know, cylindrical mm. format or whether they're flat packed, there are issues. But when you consider the number that are out there, and this is this is actually the important part, when you consider the number of lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries that are out there the number of incidents that occur is vanishingly small it's way 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 it's like you know times per million and it's not a very great number when you consider that there's something like i think 70 million iphones out there in use and a similar number of other uh, smartphones yeah. and other phones that have got lithium ion in the number of um, incidents that they've been Add everything together, ASIGs, torches, everything you can think of that's got lithium ion batteries in, and the number of incidents is less than several hundreds out of what is many, 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 many millions. And we're talking in terms of almost billions of phones and, and other devices that are out there. It's, it's a matter for education, as was said in chat. It's a matter for education, not concern. You just need to be aware that this can happen. Yeah. And what you need to do if it does happen. And let's I might as well cover that for the any any folks that are new or might be worried. If that happens, the first thing you should do is get the device out of your hand. Don't even think about taking the battery out of anything or anything like that. Just get it chucked into water as soon as you can. If you've got no water handy, there's not a bucket, there's not a sink or anything like that, get it thrown outside because the, the gas that comes off is noxious. It's not good and it can, it can um, burn. I'm not going to say explode, I'm going to say burn. So if it does happen and it's extremely rare, and I, when I say extremely rare, I mean extremely rare, but if it does happen, Chuck it. Chuck it some, somewhere where there's not going to be a fire started. So, you know, if you're in a woodshed, don't drop it on the floor, basically. But otherwise, chuck it. That's why most mods you will find have got vent holes on, like this um, Linear Hydra that I've got here is vented at the bottom. You might remember I mentioned it last week. It has the four vent holes, so it stops it from being a pipe bomb. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to realise something's going to drift and you can fling it. But it's not something that you need to be worried about. Now, you, you'll both remember, um, going back two years, Gary Dibley and I tried our plucks out to make batteries explode. Do you remember? Yeah. Yes. And it, we, we <coughs> tried all kinds. We punctured them with nails. We had direct shots on them. We did all kinds trying to make them go bang. And we never yet managed, did we? It couldn't. No. We tried to make them go bang, and the I think the closest Gary got to success was running 240 volts through one. <laughs> what are you giggling at? I remember at? that show so well, and we sat and watched it a second time to watch 45 minutes of film of nothing happening. <laughs> yes, I mean, despite uh, what he tried. To be to be absolutely fair, these were all cylindrical batteries. We didn't do it with a lipo pouch. And the fact of the matter is, if you bring a nail through a light or a pouch, it will go off. Absolutely, you know, it will. But then, how many times... So really, what this guy did was the right thing. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the company have come back to him and um, given him a refund and have said, you know, this kind of thing does happen. Which it does, whether you've got... As, as Dave just said, whether it's a phone, 
a laptop. It can happen with anything. But we're not interested in that, so we don't tend to notice it when that happens. Yes. But at the moment, things like, you know, when it happens with an e-cig, it's all over everywhere that we're looking. Yes. You know? Yes, oh, I take your point. I'm, I've, I've got to be honest. I mean, when we went down to the e-cig summit, um, and we're talking to Jeremy Mean, or Jeremy Mean was talking, whichever way around you want to put it, and he did say, and I will not mention exploding electronic cigarettes and I thought no you better hadn't either because it's not just electronic cigarettes I think there was one case he was referring to and even that wasn't uh, a confirmed mm. occasion however battery safety is very important and I have it on my list of things that I would like to talk with you about tonight and we'll <coughs> do that <coughs> straight after the first break because it's already time for the first break God, you're okay. kidding, it's flying by it again. stops by we will be back in a couple of minutes don't go anywhere. See you in two. The Safer6.co.uk sponsors of The Haze Out. We're back in the room and tonight's show is going to be slightly subverted because during the course of the break I was watching chat as one does and I do think we need to cover all of this battery safety um, for a number of reasons one to put people's minds to rest and two so that maybe you know if you're new to e-cigs you come to understand that actually there's not that much of a risk as long as you take one or two sensible precautions and one that's come up in chat <coughs> is Sprott <coughs> talking about shorting a battery out in his pocket full of change and car keys and if you think about it it actually makes sense it has two poles exposed and if you drop it into something that is basically nout but metal the chances of a short occurring are fairly high let me go to closey up you can where you can see all kinds of bits and bobs lying there. Let's pull, pull some of the stuff out of the way. And you'll see here, I've got a couple of, uh, three in fact, cases in, in which you will see batteries. And these are, they're very, very cheap to buy. In fact, from some um, vendors, when you order batteries, the cases come with them. And you'll find out who those are when you use them. That's a good thing. This one's specifically for 18340s and that size of battery. It takes two. And if you're using 18340s, then it's probably not a bad idea if you're carrying a couple of spares to carry them in one of these cases. 
and why not? That'll prevent any shorts from occurring. Same applies with 18500s. Put them in a case. We're talking coppers here. We're not looking at more than 50 or 60 pence, are we, Chris? No. For a, for a battery case. It's Cheapest wor- chips. Yeah, it's worthwhile having two or three of them handy for the size batteries that you use. Put them in. Same applies to 18650s. Here's my blue case. Um, so I know that I've got my IMRs in the blue one and in the green one um, I put my uh, Panasonic GC whatever oh, I can never remember the letters that go on there but yes uh, I've got that wrong haven't I this is the green 650s yeah. in, in 500s and in clear and, and so on and so forth yeah. but that's 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 what you need to do put them in cases if you're going to be carrying them in your pocket get them into cases and then they're not going to short out but what do you do if one does short out and we were talking about this over the break weren't we yes Mm -hmm. if you sat in your front room and you notice for instance that your mod is getting very hot don't wait for it to burst into flames it probably won't but don't don't give it the chance to Get yourself sorted, get to a window or get to the front door or wherever and chuck it out. Just chuck it outside. If it's going to go, it'll go where it's not going to damage, you know, if it's on the drive. I mean, don't let it roll under the car, whatever you do, or chuck it into a bale of hair or something, something like that. Just get it off your person, get it outside, get it onto something that's not flammable, chuck it out the window and then you can watch it from safety. If it's going to go, it'll go. If it's not going to go, you can leave it lying there for a couple of hours and when you go back, it'll be clear cold if the battery itself isn't going to go off. But that brings me to different <laughs> kinds of batteries. If you've got any questions, no, chime well, in, No, it's just something else I was thinking of. It's all right. Well, do tell me. Um, uh, well, I was thinking about this cigarette lighter that I had that exploded in me. Well, a mini explosion in my pocket. All right. Um, you know, one of these disposable lighters? Yes. And I'm invigilating an exam, which were all women, a red hot night. Uh huh. <laughs> and suddenly there was this pop in my pocket. Yeah, Everyone I've, I've... was silent. <laughs> and this ice cold liquid gas trickling down my leg. Because, <laughs> well, it, it was in my trouser pocket. <laughs> and the whole thing had burst. Right. Fortunately, I was standing some distance from the students, so they didn't hear it. But I mean, I didn't even know at the time that the lighter was in my pocket. But I mean, that was really a hot night, a heat source. Uh, could have been very embarrassing, not necessarily dangerous. But uh, well, it's 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 propane rather than methane. But otherwise, I think people would might have just have thought it was a fart. But never mind. Yes, it didn't cold, sound like that. No, cold liquid running down your leg. Yes. Yes, that could be worrying. Well, yeah. Just as well you didn't... People just need to use common sense. Don't be like me. I mean, I had a... a She's frozed. You what? She's frozed. Yeah. And not only did I have batteries in there, I had bloody magnets in there, didn't I? All oh, right. And if you picked one battery up, the whole lot came up. And nothing exploded, but I mean, there was a disaster waiting to happen. Indeed. Um, we've got internet problems on this connection, Chris, it says here, um, which I'm, I'm not fully understanding. I'll try and sort them out. Not that I can see what's going on. Can, it, can I? Can you just... There we go, that's it, that's sorted it. Chris is gone. Chris is gone. She'll be back in a tick. There'll be all sorts of funny noises until she does come back. But yes, battery safety is all about using your noggin. There are some kinds of batteries that are good to use. IMR ones, for instance, that although they're not protected, they're built to be able to take a current, which is, that's going to get annoying. I shall drop the call. Put are you back? Always, you know, if you're in doubt, better safe than sorry. Chris, Mm -hmm. we lost you there for a little while. Did you? Yeah, I've got no idea why. 
Oh, me, did my internet go? Because everything froze here, but I thought, be the true professional and keep talking. Well, that was, <laughs> yeah. We've lost your camera. Right, okay, I can easily sort that, I think. Right. I love it when the Gremnels, Gremnels, <laughs> Gremnels, Gremlins tear cold. That's better. It looks a bit more sensible now. Well, back then. Yes. Right. Look, let's go to closey up your and let me show you something. And I probably need to get Zoomy Box out as well. This is what I wanted you to see. This has just arrived with me today. And it is, it's an EFES battery, but I want you to read on it what it says. All right, 2100 milliamp hours. It's an IMR. This is safe for chemistry. It's high drain rechargeable, but it's rated, as you can see here, at 30 amps. But underneath all of that, right, and you'll see the discharge current is 30 amps. It can do 60 amps for 75 seconds without going bang. This is the kind of battery, not necessarily this one, but this is the kind of battery that you need to be thinking about using. Now, this one has come from safersigs.co.uk and thanks to Daz for sending it up. I'm going to try, I mean it's a waste of time, I know, but I'm going to try and make it go bang. Not tonight, this will be filmed, otherwise we could be sitting for 45 minutes waiting for the damn thing to go bang while it discharges. I have one in use uh, in the Linear Hydrid, Hydra and it's running at um, it's running at 12 it's in there I'll just take the bottom off so you can see this is not going to be easy there we go there it is in there it's working perfectly uh, charged them up when they arrived I've had absolutely no issue with it it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do it's working perfectly I've had no heat no nasties no nothing out of it and it's doing the job perfectly well. I'm going to put the two of them, well, I'll pick one of them and I'll put it through its paces. I'm going to abuse it, is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a proper kicking and see what happens with it. It should, if it does what it says on the tin, and I've got no doubt that it will, it should be fine. This thing delivering 30 amps, I normally feel it in this device if, if a battery's really trying hard, um, especially when I've got it cranked up. And it's not even getting warm. Have a feel of that there now, right? There's no, no, no right. Things at all. So what I shall what I shall do is give it a good go. <laughs> so are you saying that in the world of batteries? That is a, a new kind of battery, is it? Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Have a feel of that. Just the same as before. No, ch no change in temperature whatsoever. Had I done that <coughs> with a normal lithium ion, and you, you saw how long I held the button down for, right? That wasn't lift the finger off between each drag. That was held down perfectly with a normal lithium ion with a discharge uh, rate of 2.5 amps. That would have been hot as the hobs, and it isn't. The battery is capable of handling the current that you're going to throw at it. Now, if you are going sub ohm, and many people are these days, then you've got to use a battery that's capable of handling the current that you're drawing out of it. And this may require that you learn a little bit of Ohm's law. So cut, that lets you out straight away. Oh, too late. But it's dead simple. You multi, well, let's not even get into the maths on it. I'm not going to go there. If you're not sure how much current you need to draw on whatever atomizer you've got on there, there's no point in being anything other than what I call Germanic, over-engineer it, put something that's capable of handling 30 amps into it or more and you're not going to go wrong that's the simple answer never ever skimp on batteries if they're too cheap if it looks too cheap to be true the chances are it is get goodens yes can Chris? i read out what gareth lord has put into chat you can he's put in now this is going to be a hard one for me to read out but i'll give it a go 
if you take away one thing from this thread, remember this. The term IMR simply indicates that LIMN204 is a major component of the cathode. Mm -hmm. It does not necessarily indicate that a cell has exceptional rate capability or improved safety characteristics, properties often incorrectly associated with cells with the IMR designation. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not even sure that's English, <laughs> but I'll pass it on to you, Dave. I'm sure you'll understand what that means. I, I, I understand it. I actually do understand it. Um, and I'm not even going to say it to my shame. He's exactly right in what he says. Um, not all IMRs, if you like, are created equal. But at some point, you've got to make a decision about the quality of the battery that you're buying. And I'm going to say if it's got no label on it, if it's got, I mean, this one's barcode at the bits and back. I'll go back, close up, you come again. And, and I'm not saying that this is the best on the face of the planet, but it is at the very least traceable. You'll see there's a barcode on there. It's mm -hmm. being supplied by a bloke, or it's being supplied to me by a bloke who I would trust with my life. That's Daz at safersigs.co.uk. And I would. I've known him a long while. And, and I would trust him with me life. And I know he doesn't put stuff out that he hasn't tested and he gets everything tested to the best of his possible ability. This thing is traceable. If anything does go adrift with it, he will honour any warranties that are there. He'll stand by his product. That's the stamp of the man. It's a branded battery. The one thing I would never do, right? I would never buy an unbranded battery battery where I don't know what the source is and if that means I'm going to pay three or four quid more than I would have to for an unbranded one that's fine because I want to know that what I'm getting is right and Chris you and I both know we've had batteries that have come from God knows where made by God knows who with God knows what inside it that have been utter complete punks. So is, it, is there a price comparison available on that one? <clears throat> um, I've got no idea how much it is but I, I can't imagine that it's going to be much above eight or nine, ten quid, right. there or thereabouts. And to me, you know, that's that's a small price to pay for that little bit of um, security, oh, yes. if you like. Because what, I know what does this say for the people who sub on vape? Is battery? relevant to them i'm seeing a lot of questions in chat about sub on vaping yes yes it is um the bottom line on it is if you go down to sub ohm you are drawing high current that's the bottom line you are drawing high current now oh, i'm gonna have to hunt around to see if i can find some old dirt batteries um a protected battery, for instance, will usually have a protection circuit that kicks in at two and a half amps, and there's a reason for that. Mm. And the reason for that is that the underlying technology, the actual battery itself, is not capable of turning out more than three amps without it's going to start to heat up. So the protection circuit kicks in long before it gets there. If you, and you know, you, you can probably stick a, a, a 2.3 ohm atomizer 2.3 ohm coil on there and it'll be fine because it's not going to draw that much in the way of amperage but if you stick a 0.8 or a 0.7 ohm coil on there that is going to draw a shed load of current and again you might as well have a, a battery technology that is going to be able to provide that current without overheating now I can't think of many situations where you're going to draw more than 30 amps. But you could, for instance, in a DNA 30 equipped mod. It will draw 30 amps. If the battery can deliver it, it'll draw it. You know? Then, fine. You, you've got protection in the DNA 30, but you've also, in the case of this one, got a battery that it says on the tin will handle a 30 amp current and will handle a 60 amp current for 75 seconds without any danger 
to the battery and therefore without any danger to the user. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? So, uh, 30 watts, I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm being corrected in chat and you're right. 30 watts. 30 but watts, if it's yeah. if it's got a 0.8 ohm coil in there, 30 watts, it's going to need 30 amps to get there. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the 30 amp, it won't give 30 amps for long, no. It's it, seriously, uh, honestly, the, the, I, I don't quite get this whole sub ohm thing. You can do it with electronics, do it with electronics. And my head's not right for figures. Sorry, Chris, I interrupted it. No, not at all. It's just I'm going back um, two, three years when we first started getting the tubular mods and you had a battery like this, <coughs> you know. That was the sort of battery that was available then, an ultrafire. And there was no danger whatsoever because you never vaped anything that required more than the 3.7. You know, and this provided, I think, a fully charged one would be around about 4.1, 4.2, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. And you've scared people showing an ultrafire. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's still absolutely fine in a mech mod, and I very rarely go over 3.7, so I don't have a problem. You see where I'm coming from. Mm. But I make absolutely certain that I've got the right one if I'm going to be higher than that. And uh, this is fine. You know, horses for courses. You're absolutely right, but I, I will say there's lots and lots and lots going on in chat for those of you that are watching on video on demand. Yeah. Um, and the bottom line on it is better safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got something that's going to draw a lot of power, a lot of amps, then use a battery that's capable of delivering more than you're going to use. Over engineer it. If right, I'm I'm the same sort of weight as Sir Steve Redgrave. I'm around about twenty stone. Six foot two, I can carry it. I mean, I'm possibly obese. I don't give a monkey's. Frankly, I'm comfortable. But if I was going to go, um, what do you call that thing where you dangle off a piece of rope down the side of a building? Uh, if, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I was going to be doing that and they said, oh, yeah, yeah, that rope's rated to 25 stone, I'd be saying, right, I want three of them, please. Actually, four. Better yet, can you give me something that's rated for a ton? Then I'm much, much happier that it's not going to snap while I'm dangling off it, exactly coming down the side of a building, and it's exactly the same with batteries. For goodness sake, get one that's overrated for the job you're going to ask of it. Always. That's one of the things about a DNA 30 versus a DNA 20. It's overrated. <coughs> I don't know many people that are going to go up to 30 watts, but if you're going to go up to 20 watts, really, for on a DNA 20 then you know why not get the dna 30 that's rated for more than that so it's always working within its capabilities and that's the bit that i do like about the batteries that i use which are the awr imrs and the panasonic gray ones i'll call it because i just can't remember what the hell they're called and now these efests which i'm trying they're rated for a much higher current than i'm drawing from them and that's always going to be a good thing and probably a good point at which to take the break. I'm just looking at... Oh, and the time's gone again. It has. Hiko, okay. Hiko has just said it's not just that, Dave, and he's right. The closer you take batteries to their rating, the less capacity you'll get out of them, and that is very, very true. So always, always, always get something that's rated for much higher than you're going to use it. That way you're not stressing it. It makes sense. And if it costs a couple of extra quid, fine. Because although, and I want to I want to clear, I want to be sure and clear about this before we go to the adverts. Don't sleep uneasy in your bed tonight. The actual risk of a catastrophic failure of any of the batteries that we use is tiny. It is so rare. It's it, it almost never happens. It's it's lit one in a million. And it's probably even less than that. It's probably one in two million or three million. The risk is so small, don't lose sleep out of it. But be sensible in what you use. We'll take the ads, we'll be back in two minutes because we've got this new juice to try 
and all the rest of the material I had lined up will go out the window. Back in two. Okay. And we're back in the room. I couldn't see there to see whether the, the, the adverts were nearly finished. So it's Dave, Keith and Kat. And we've kind of gone off the rails a little bit tonight, but I think we needed to. And just, just to emphasise it, if you look after your batteries, they'll look after you. And somebody did say in chat that there was more chance of a certain MEP coming on side than there is <laughs> of a battery going postal on you if you look after it. You look after your batteries, they'll look after you. So don't forget cases get your batteries in cases if you're going to be pocketing them even if you're not going to be pocketing them use a decent charger and i'll, I'll do a roundup of charges um, we're going to have so much material that we're not going to use coming up over the weeks but i will do a roundup of battery charges that i use and i'll just say one word xstar i use xstar chargers i'm going to have a look at some other ones as well over time but yeah xstar chargers they're well priced and are very reliable in my experience and yes somebody did say they did like the idea of these purple leaf vests being traceable which they are don't buy cheap buy good that's the best rule of thumb shall we try some juice druids fluid druids fluid God. i'd not heard of it it arrived with the batteries unbidden and i took a sniff at it i'll let you have a sniff at it before we, we try it and tell me what you think. Tell me what you, you, you note. Anisee licorice? That was what I got out of the smell of it. Yes. That is exactly... An anisee de licorice -y. That's exactly what I got out of the smell of it. Now, I've dripped it in here and it's been soaking. I've got it running at 9 watts on the copper in a dripper. And tell me what you think it tastes like. There's a citrusy element to it as well. But is there any aniseed or licorice in no. it? <laughs> no. No, very little. Very little. That's strange, that. Isn't it? It doesn't match the the smell of it at all. Not even remotely. Does do you it get match? a citrusy? Well, uh, I'm going to do the taste now and describe Oh, you it. haven't? Well, I oh, have, right. yes, but I, 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 I kind of knew what to expect. But yes, when you, when you smell this, when you have a sniff at it, there's definite, definite licorice in there and aniseed. It's almost, as well, a bit like um, the green drink can't remember what it's called now anyway but definitely 
I don't think I've ever smelled a juice that was so obvious when you smell it. When you smell it, it is definitely aniseed and licorice that you're getting really, really, really. But now comes the taste. So let's give it a blast and see where we get. Mandarin oranges. I've got mandarin oranges or clementines, not orange orange, yeah. but clementines or mandarins. What I'm not getting at all is any aniseed. <coughs> oh, hang on. Just a slight aftertaste of aniseed and a slight amount of, of licorice. But it's only very, very mild. I thought it was a rather more sharper citrus than an orange, but, you know, palates it, are different. It's, it's, it's down that clementine, tangerine, that kind no, of... No, maybe, yes. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's, not like a, it's not like a Jaffa orange. It's not in-your-face Fanta. And it's not as sharp as, say, a lemon. No. Mmm. Apparently, does as there, he says it's shuttle red aniseed balls fused with a hint, hint of tangerine. I'm getting ah. more the tangerine and less of the aniseed balls. That is, I have to say, it's on, a, a, on a cotton wick. Have a chuck at it. It's nice. You can't smell you see, it. The, uh, I'm, I'm doing this and the aniseed's coming across quite, quite but it, strongly. But it's not tasting of it. No. And I don't think my taste buds are shot. I wonder what else I've got to try it in. Hang on. Pardon me. For being so rude, was not me. It was my food. Will the flat top purple leaf fests work in an SVD? I wish I had an SVD here to, hand, uh, to try it. I would tell you. Druid's fluid. That's what it's called. Needs bigger balls. Mark Shaw said. You could be right. <laughs> I have here. Yeah. After I've tried it a few times, there's a hint of aniseed that's coming through now. It's it's an after flavour rather is. than uh, rather than anything else. I'm just gonna sort another atty out to try it on. It's certainly pleasant. It is. Mm. It's uh, it's quite makes quite a change because I'm not normally a fan of. Uh, orangey stuff but that tangerine's quite uh, it's quite refreshing in a a strange way mm. can i borrow your device yes thank you because it needs an ego threaded adapter for it run later so i've i've stuck it into oh you've got a plinth on it as well oh yes very flash young fellow my lad Right, try it on this. Mm. Any difference, you think? Nope. Yes, there is more aniseed in that. Right. So that's at slightly lower voltage. Yes. Yes, the aniseed's slightly stronger. Yes, I would need to... Uh, still subtle, though. Mm. Mm. It's nice. Mm. It's very it, nice. It's a very nice change. Um, for me, on, on the dripper, much more tangerine -y, um, in what is now, it? Now, to me, it's even nicer with this. Is it? Than, yeah. 
Prezzy for you. You can have that. What, the? The atomizer, yeah. Yeah, it's... As Mark has pointed out, aniseed or citrus you probably need in glass rather than plastic. Just in case. It could get uh, a little bit... Dave, do you have any present. red E-Fest batteries there? Red E-Fest batteries, I think I it's may well... It's just found it with like a comparison on the height between the purple ones and the red ones. As it happens, I have a red E-Fest. Um, so I can go to where we are, put them together and see if we can see any differentials. Right. Same. There you go, they're on a flat surface. Uh, I need to, I don't know if, is that easy enough to see from there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can everybody in chat see what they need to see? I'm trying to keep them very level and it looks to me as though there is the square root of bugger all difference and I'm about as close up as I dare go and I've got them levelled off there. That's there fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Who was that for? Moonlit. Moonlit. If there's, if there's any difference, I can't really see it. Hang on. I'll try and zoom in on that even further. Get it right in the, in the middle of the shot so that people can make up their own minds. Oh, Gillis, um, send him to the corner, will you? Why, what's he doing? The green one is bigger. Thank you for that, Gillis. <laughs> the green one. <laughs> Someone has the same trouble as you. <laughs> it's if, if there's any difference, it's absolutely tiny. It's a fraction. Fraction, the red one. I kind of... Nah, I can't. It's where no. the nipple head actually is that's important. Right, well, the, the nipple head is slightly yeah. higher, I would say. On the red one. On the purple one. Oh, oh right, well, there you go. From see. where I'm looking at it, mind you, I've got me long distance glasses on. But if there's. I, 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 honestly, I wouldn't like. If there's any difference, it's very, very small. Yeah, it's not going to make any Very, very in small. I hope that, that. I mean, certainly from the point of view of. Everything I've tried the purple one in today, um, it's working without any problems. Discord Des Wilkinson has just typed into chat, nipples snigger. Yes. <sighs> now, can I just say with this... I'm not getting me calipers on it, Gillis. I'm finding the flavours more distinctive than I did with that. Is that right? Yes. With the druid's uh, fluid? I like it. Mm. It's that little orangey bit is just quite nice and, and everything else that's in there is not in your face. Well, you I'm know? finding the orange is, is, is much easier to identify. It is tangerine. Yes. You're right. There you go. Tangerine. I've, Can I, I just put out about this vape meat? Before? Would you, please? Because okay. I'm starting to get confused with nipples now. I keep the chat's gone off on one. Yeah. Well, there's a, a vape meet on Saturday the 22nd of February from 5pm at Presley Inn, Presley, Shefton Mallet in Somerset. Summer is that? That's where they meet a cider. Uh, go by and both. there's 9% draft cider on top. Is the be buggered? Uh-huh. The details are on the All About forum. So go and have a look if you're in that neck of the woods. Uh, when's that? 22nd of February. Ooh, I wonder if I can arrange to be down there because the idea of a 9% cider, that, um, <laughs> yes, that'd be nice. God. It, is Disco <laughs> Des doing this? He is because he's just put it I in chat. I believe it was Disco Des that put the details in, yeah. I'm not going. <laughs> if it's him that's doing it, I'm not going. That's shocking. I mean, he's been nasty to me tonight, he has. <laughs> Yes, very boring. Has just just clattered into chat. Does anybody remember using red trust fires? The eighteen six fifty, where no two were the same size, even if you got real ones. I do. I ne never again. Trust is the one word. The worst you ones never were the so Do you remember them? Oh God, I. 
18 650s that were Look actually... I've got one. 18 700s, have you? There's one. The black so shine. Yeah, and everything, every one of them was different. <laughs> I mean, that one's got a raised top. I know, there was no two the same. No, and they never fitted in anything. I Ex never found anything yet that I could use that on. Yes. Leslie Anna Lawless, I have decided, is a naughty girl and she <coughs> needs her bottom smacked because she's just typed in clothes pegs on nipples. Ladies and gentlemen, we now know what Leslie Anna Lawless is really like. That's terrible. <laughs> and Gavin Dipple has asked, would they fit in the smock SID? He's had issues with some not fitting. Um, I would think you'd be all right. And I'm going to need to find me calipers. Look, I'll find me calipers for next week. <laughs> and we'll get an exact measurement on them. OK? Um, yes, and Thomas Beer said, don't trust anything with the name trust in it. In it. And Becky said, chat has gone to the mammaries. She's not wrong. Uh, Sav, Sav is worrying about them. I still say we've got the best chat on the face of the planet. <laughs> I really do. Because they're entertaining, if nothing else. But this is why I never watch chat during VT Talk. And I'd better run through the rest of the programmes for this week because we're out of time. We are completely out of we time. We are totally out of time. When you finish yeah. watching this, go to our RY4 radio where you will find some proper rock metal being played. That's always going to be good. But tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, Mark Green, Mark Van Basten will be here with Vapor Singh. That should be entertaining. Followed at 9.45 by DE Talk, our German language programme. And Thomas Beer, who's been clattering into chat, he's part of that, together with Steffi and Mark and Norbert and, and loads of other people in our German language one. That's always good. Wednesday night, we've got Team Talk, haven't we, Chris? Wednesday, we've got Team Talk, yeah. That's at 9 o'clock. Chris will have different hair for that one. Oh, yeah. Hair a day, <laughs> different on Wednesday. Yeah. Thursday night is VT Talk and coincidentally the anniversary of our first ever broadcast three years ago now, is it, or four? Good God. It will be February the 6th, so I'm going to do a little You're bit right. of looking back over um, and we'll be having a, a bit natter. There's a couple of topics that have come up lately on Twitter that I want to talk about, so I'm going to have some guests on. We're going to be talking about pregnancy and e-cigs, I hope, and we're also going to be talking about medicinal e -cigs. two topics of conversation interspersed with some blasts from the past over the last three years to celebrate uh, three years of VT TV since three years since we started Chris God has not flown by it's an absolute amazement it um, is and I'm learning new things all the time I didn't know e -cigs could get pregnant well there you go pregnant e -cigs I've been puzzling e -cigs. over that <laughs> I thought I was missing something Pregnancy Brilliant. and e -cigs. It's been, it's oh, been, right. yes, that, these have come up on Twitter, so I want to talk about those. Medicinal e -cigs, like the herb. <coughs> we'll talk um. about that on a different one. Um, so that's coming up on Thursday. And then on Sunday, Dave's Tackle Box will be back. Now, and I, I, I've been asked, if I will, to uh, pass on Dave's apologies for Sunday night. He was not a well boy. And apparently he's picked a bug up in Switzerland that Steffi also picked up from somebody in Switzerland I have no idea how they've both managed to pick this up, but there has been a bug going round. So the poor lad was uh, making like uh, the exorcist and wasn't very well. But he should be back with you, God willing, on Sunday night when I'll be in a posh hotel in Harrogate celebrating my uh, wedding anniversary, which happens the week after, strangely enough. So it's all good. All go a pregnant e -cig is that one with no nicotine in it. Oh. <sighs> And as somebody's point out, pointed out, on Sunday, Dave had the Cresta runs. That's what it was. Oh, <laughs> nice one, Alan Fletcher. Um, Dave Chant, first time on chat for him. Thank you for tuning in, Dave. Nice to see you. Brilliant name, by the way, Dave. There's, you never have too many Daves. It's all good. All good. Um, hey, it's been a great pleasure to share the last hour with Chris and with Keith, and also with you. It has been emotional, I think it's safe to say. Yet emotional. again, right. loads of stuff planned, material planned that we just didn't get yes, there. Yes, I can see stuff, yes. Yes, uh, there's all yeah. kinds of stuff I was going to look at when we did it. <coughs> but never mind. I think it's been a good night. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, talking about batteries and stuff. It's all good. Um, so until we see you next time, vape on, vape hard, and nil carborundum 
illegitimi, or to put it in plain English, don't let the bastards grind you down. Till we see you next time, from all of us here, have a good one. See you on the flip side. Take care. Good, good night. night. Good night. Say good night, good night, Chris. Good night, Chris. Good night, Chris. Good night, good night all. <laughs>